All right, I'm going to try to keep this one short and sweet because I've got a hundred other things i got to edit and look at the bags under my eyes. I'm suffering. If you want to ease my pain, you can follow me on Facebook or like me on Twitter. I said that backwards, didn't I? Yes, I did. It's, it's the other way around. The follow on the Twitter and the liking on the Facebook. And be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell notification button because, you know, YouTube doesn't like to notify people anymore and I don't know what's going on. And just a quick reminder, I grade things on a light spectrum of color. So the cool colors, the uh, green, blue, and the purple, those are the high grades. And then the low grades are the yellow, orange, and the red. Now let's do this. <laughs> So episode 7 is primarily about our friend Jeremiah, the Joker, and I gotta say this episode actually gave me a new appreciation of this character. I've always said I'm a fan of Jerome, I didn't think the Jeremiah transition was even necessary, uh, I still don't think it was, but what they did, and they can't go back now, I think Jeremiah won me over a little bit. I think I like him a little more now. Cameron Monaghan did some very enjoyable things with this character this episode. He's becoming a little more laughy. He's becoming a little more on the uh, fence of Jerome and Jeremiah. So he's kind of in the middle now. He laughs more, but he's still calculating. It's it's kind of cool. His wardrobe is freaking amazing. It looks great. It's so jokery. I, I, they're, they're trying to push the boundaries of what they're allowed to do with the green hair so it's it's a little more of a dark teal the suit is, is a little more of a blue instead of a purple but it still works really well it's it's very joker you can clearly see what they're doing jeremiah's voice i've said this before it's very original i like the little little tinge of an accent he's giving to it it makes it very um uh the episode also takes a couple tangents into the, the Barbara storyline, which is not nearly as interesting, but also that baby is developing at an alarming rate. That's gotta be the Antichrist in her belly. But enough about that, back to Jeremiah. The ending confrontation in this episode seemed a little short, but uh, it, it, wa it wasn't bad by any means. It was just a little short. I wish it would have went on a little longer. Now, I, I'm digging Jeremiah this episode, but the problem I'm still having is the fact that the clownish persona doesn't make sense for Jeremiah's character. It made sense for Jerome. Jerome uh, was, you know, raised his entire life in the circus. He was kind of, he had to laugh to, to, to get himself through the pain, right? Jeremiah, he was all about engineering and he's very professional. Where is this colorful, clownish dressing and laughing coming from? It doesn't make sense, but it's still cool. And like I predicted, we're left in a way that we're probably not going to see Jeremiah again until the final episode when it's that 10-year time jump, and I'm looking forward to that. Episode 8. I'm so disappointed in you, Gotham. He here's the thing. Let, let me first explain something. Gotham was originally allowed to have 10 episodes this season, um, and I believe they made a cohesive story and wrote it out and they had their whole plan and then Fox or whatever they 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 allowed them two more episodes they said now you're gonna get 12 episodes so Gotham's like on one hand okay now we can do some more content but on the other hand now we have to fit and kinda force crap into this story that wasn't gonna be there in the first place and here's where everything falls apart this episode was entirely filler you can feel it it doesn't feel like it fits with the rest of the season it's really off we see a lot of Ed and uh, Oswald working together trying to build their submarine, knock on the door, and we see uh, Penn, who died in a previous episode, is back, and he's the ventriloquist now, who is a, a, a famed Batman villain. First of all, it was complete bullshit that they brought him back to life after we clearly saw him die, and then they throw in some kind of unrealistic bullshit story of how he came back, which I realize... Gotham doesn't do things realistically, but it was lazy is I guess the word I'm will I'm looking for the good part of this is that uh, Penn as the ventriloquist was great. I thought he was the perfect ventriloquist looks wise uh, character wise um, He had the perfect split personality thing the actor who plays him actually has the skill of ventriloquism So it was really him doing the ventriloquism with the doll Dummy, I'm sorry, Scarface, I'm so sorry. Just a fantastic um, portrayal overall of this character. Until, for some bullshit reason that I don't understand where the writers go to hell. <laughs> okay, that was a little harsh. I don't mean that, but what were you thinking? You 
You know what, I, I can't say. They do something with this character that just pissed me off. You didn't need to do that. You could have left it where it was. You didn't have to address him any further. Just let him be for the future. I can't say much more, and I know I'm confusing people who haven't seen this, but watch it yourself. You'll see what I mean. You're going to be very upset, most likely. But form your own opinions. That's what I always say. I don't want you to take my word for anything, because opinions are opinions. They don't really matter. They do and they don't. Then there was a whole plot line with Harvey in this episode, Harvey Bullock, and, uh... It was too confusing for me. Maybe you guys understood it. I watched it twice. I still didn't really understand um, what exactly happened there. They're dealing with a shapeshifter named Jane Doe. Again, it was a character that was just forced in there because they had an extra episode they could do something with. Blatant ripoff of Clayface. I know that Jane Doe was in the comics and all that, but for this show, there, it, there was no point in doing that. Some lazy bullshit shots in here when, when Jim is in the house investigating trying to look for the suspect and Jane Doe touches the cop and turns into the cop and that was pointless that was just to show us what she could do because Jim then walked into the room immediately after found the dead cop like she forgot to close the door and hide the dead body what or whatever knocked out what a, what the fuck and a minor nitpick or maybe a major nitpick I don't know Jane Doe turns into Barbara at one point in this episode right what was the point she had already done what she needed to do. She was already out of the GCPD. She came back in as Barbara just to say hi, and then they realized it wasn't Barbara, and then she ran off again. Zero point. And then at the end, uh, Harvey's explaining himself to Jim. I still don't understand exactly what he did wrong. <sighs> Jim's like, I can't offer you forgiveness, Harvey. Now, if that meant Jim doesn't forgive him, that's some bullshit, because uh, Jim already... We've, we've been here before, okay? We, we know that Harvey was a dirty cop. Jim knew this before. Before Jim came along, yes, Harvey was a dirty cop. It was a known fact. And Jim, you're not so innocent yourself, my friend, and we've been through this. Harvey had to forgive you for all the pig shit that you started last season, and now you're not forgiving him for that. That's just bullshit, if that's what they even were going for. I'm not quite sure. This whole episode was a mess. The thing about this episode was that if you took it away because it was a filler, you would not have missed anything. This whole episode could have just not happened, and it would make no difference in the remaining story. I promise you. Episode 9 was written by Ben McKenzie, who plays Jim Gordon, and directed by Aaron Richards, who plays Barbara, to no avail. Now, this episode actually was better than the last one. I'll give it that. There are some very nice things about this episode that I enjoyed. I like the Selena and Bruce romance. I like something near the end that was very heartfelt and touching. It gave, got me a little bit emotional. The problems I have include this very forced storyline with Ivy, uh, I never liked how Gotham handled her character, so I don't really enjoy seeing her on screen. I'm not excited by it. She drives the plot of this episode, but to really no point because they kind of drop her at one point in this episode, and we don't even see where that story would have gone. They just kind of drop it and uh, guarantee we're probably not going to see her again in this season, except maybe the final episode. There was, there was a hallucination sequence with Jim that filled a lot of this episode, and I, th I think it was a little cheesy. It was alright. There's something between uh, two characters seemed very rushed. In a, in a one-month time jump, it was all... Uh, they put the past behind them that quickly, and everything was just unrealistically okay. Barbara is very fluctuating with her attitude towards things about this baby. I just, I don't see, I, I don't have a grip on it. One nitpick as well, just, uh, just to throw him in there, of course. Alfred hears Zaz's gunshots very, very much in a delayed manner. He doesn't hear them until Zaz brings out the machine guns. Zaz was shooting handguns like for a whole minute before that and then Alfred's like take these last two episodes out of the mix entirely and watch the, the season as it was originally meant to be laid out I guarantee you will not have missed anything. 